Brett Pontecorvo here at MainStageToAbleton.com. Today we're going to be talking about how to set up adjustable key ranges. Um, this is something that I've used a lot when I'm setting up musical theater keyboard 2 programming where I may have strings and brass that are jumping around through their ranges throughout the whole show and I need a way to quickly switch their ranges even though I'm not necessarily changing the sounds. Um, this is something that also comes in handy if you're playing with a live band or if you're trying to maybe move your bass sound to a lead sound. Um, so let's take a look at how that's done. All right, so let's get started setting up our splits. So the first thing that we need to do is add a instrument rack to a default MIDI channel strip. And then we're going to add our instruments that we're going to be using. And for this demonstration, I am going to use an e-piano. Uh, this is Contax e-piano here. And this is the Saw 9 Buzz Complex Bass, um, which is one of Ableton's um, basic presets from the analog synthesizer. And it, it's a nice sound. Um, so the next thing that we need to do is have a way to automate our key range splits. We're going to do that using the Pitch plugin. So you can navigate to the MIDI Effects category, select Pitch, and you're going to drag your Pitch plugin onto each one of your chains. So you'll need to do it once for e-piano and once for the Saw 9 Buzz Complex Bass. Now the first setting I want to create is a setting that only allows the e-piano sound to come through. So we're essentially going to filter out all of the notes that would go to the bass. Now the way that we're going to do that is we're going to set the lowest note of this bass to be a very high note. So let's actually set it all the way up at G8. Um, so that means that any note I play on the keyboard is going to be filtered out. And you can tell by that little blue dot. So if I were to turn this off, you would hear my buzz bass. But when I turn it on, we're filtering it all the way out. Now we need a way to tell Ableton to remember this setting. And the way that we're going to do that is by using a dummy clip. So once you've set this to G8, you can double click here and create a dummy clip. And you'll notice that the envelopes setting here already has pulled up pitch and lowest, which are the two things that we set. And the dotted line is set to G8, which is the last parameter that we set. So Ableton is very smart. It remembers the last thing that you did. Um, and you can just go in and click on it. Um, so that's what we did. We just told this dummy clip to remember that the lowest note that bass will be accepting is G8, which essentially filters everything out. Um, and if you want to go back to the other view, you can do that quickly by hitting Shift and Tab. Um, it is always a good idea to map your power on, power off buttons, or record them rather, uh, to your dummy clip. So let's do that now. Um, if you go ahead and give that a click and then hit Shift Tab, you'll see that the pitch device on has already been selected for you and all you need to do is click on that dotted line. So now when you fire this clip, um, you're going to set your lowest note to G8 and you're going to tell Ableton that it is uh, needs to be on. One other thing we need to remember to do is set our launch uh, quantization to none. So as soon as it fires, we're in business. So once I fire that clip, you'll see that I have this little red dot here and here, and that means that those are mapped parameters. Um, and now over here, our lowest note is C2, our range is 127. Let's click on those and just save them to just remind Ableton what's going on, because sometimes you'll set something up to work well in a particular order, um, and then you move in a different order and it no longer works well. So we do want to remember to save all of our parameters. That's great. And just for reference, we should rename this to E Piano since that is what it is. Now, every time I fire that, I'll have E Piano and I will not have bass. And you'll notice here, this is showing that MIDI information is getting sent to the bass, but here it's being filtered out. All right. So let's go ahead now and create a split. Um, we're going to set our range for our bass first. So let's select our bass and let's set our lowest note. We can actually set our lowest note, let's say to maybe C1. You can set this wherever you want. C1 is just a 
a, a good place. Um, so now we can create a dummy clip and you'll see it already prepared it for us in envelopes. Click that dotted line, shift tab to bring it on back. And our range is set in half steps. So I would like this range to be, let's say two octaves. So that's gonna be 24 half steps. And if I go back, shift tab, range 24, boom. So now I've got this set up. So let's see what that sounds like uh, when I fire it. And there it goes, the bass is gone now because I set it to be two octaves. It's a beautiful thing. Great, let's set the range of the E piano now. So we know that our last bass note is here at C3. So let's set our E piano's first note to be C sharp three. So our lowest note, C sharp three. Let's go ahead and shift tab and click the dotted line, shift tab to bring it on back. And our range can go all the way up because we have no other notes that are gonna be higher. Um, and it's always a good idea to map your power button, shift tab, power, great. All right, so let's test that. When I fire my E piano, I've got just E piano. And when I fire this next clip here, I've got got my split just like that. Uh, cool. All right, let's flip everything upside down right now. Um, I find that sometimes bass sounds are actually great as lead sounds. Um, so that's exactly what we're going to do right now. We're going to set our saw buzz to be a lead sound. Um, oh, but first we should rename this. Don't forget to rename that. This is, I'm going to rename it split. We'll know what that means. Okay, um, let's say that our lead sound is gonna start at C4. So let's move this up to C4. Are you with me? This is, this is a standard concept. Once you get this, you can use it anyway. Uh, double click here, um, C4 on this dotted line. Oop. Great, shift tab to bring it on back. And since this is gonna be our lead sound and we don't have anything higher, um, let's go ahead and set the range to be all the way up. Shift tab, your range is already up, it's prepared for you, click on it, head on back. Great, so now we need to set the E piano. Um, so let's set our lowest E piano note to C1. There we go, shift tab, C1, beautiful, shift tab, bring it on back. Now, our saw buzz pad starts at C4 and our E piano starts at C1, so that's C1, C2, C3, C4. So one octave would be 12, two is 24, 36. And I don't love that overlap, so I'm actually going to make this 35. And we can go in here. And make it 35. So now I've got... Cool. So we should rename this. I'm going to rename it Bass Lead. And when you have something like this happening, that's a great opportunity to use uh, a chord trigger, which if you check out the link in the comments, I've actually made a video on chord triggers. And your chord triggers can be mapped the same way that your dummy clips are. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you liked what you see, you can subscribe to my YouTube channel here, and you should also head over to mainstagetoableton.com forward slash go to get your free copy of the fast track patch list guide that'll have you up and running with a fully functioning, fully customizable patch list that very much mimics the way Mainstage's patch list works. Hope to see you there.